Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. Today, I'm going to show you how to clean your engine bay. Now, if you've never done this before, it can seem quite intimidating, right? A lot of components, uh, some mechanical bits and pieces, electronics, but if you use some common sense and some precautions, it's actually quite simple and safe to do. I've been detailing cars for over 25 years now, and through those years, I've detailed hundreds and hundreds of engine bays, and never once did I have an issue, because I'll be sharing with you all the tips and tricks on how to do this properly. I'm also going to be showing you uh, what kind of products, equipment, and tools I use to do the job. And by the way, I'll link those in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And also, you're going to have a first-person view or perspective of how I do this. I'm going to be strapping this GoPro to my head, uh, so you'll be able to follow along for the journey. So without further ado, stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start the show. All right, guys, let's jump right into this engine bay detail. First order of business, always wear some nitrile gloves when you're detailing to protect your hands from the chemicals and any other personal protection equipment that you might need. Uh, work either in a ventilated space. If you're working outside, that's fine. Just don't work in direct sunlight. Also make sure that the engine bay is cool to the touch. So if you just drove the vehicle, let it rest for a few hours. You don't want to be using any chemicals or cold water on a hot engine block because you don't want anything to be expanding or contracting and potentially run into any issues. Talking about issues, you don't be worried. You're going to hear a lot of things and people trying to scare you, right? The majority of vehicles in the last decade to the last 15 years uh, have a lot of watertight components, so you can use water. Just don't focus a high-pressured stream on one given area for a big amount of time, and you'll be safe. So, for example, my pressure washer, I set it to roughly 1,000 PSI uh, to wash cars, which is roughly roughly 69 bars if you're in Europe, and that's more than enough. And keep the water flowing. You can use a regular garden hose if you want as well. As far as the uh, sensitivity of different electronic bits and pieces, well, there's the alternator that you might want to cover with a plastic baggie uh, if you feel that it's exposed like this one. But the majority of the vehicles today have a lot of plastic cladding uh, underneath the, uh, the hood, so uh, you don't need to take too much precaution. The battery terminals are usually protected. You can disconnect the battery if you're really scared. I won't do that today. I've done a hundreds and hundreds of um, detailing jobs for engine bays, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, any other older vehicles, if you have any sensitive electronics uh, like distributors or uh, any exposed uh, electronics, perhaps uh, an old ECU unit that's super exposed or some fuse boxes that might be wonky, wanky or that kind of stuff, you might want to protect as well. So let's grab a plastic baggie and we're going to cover the alternator and that's pretty much all that's needed. This is a 2021 uh, Nissan Rogue that my uh, girlfriend purchased brand new last year. So the engine bay isn't that dirty. Uh, but what I recommend is that you guys clean it. And of course, if you clean the engine bay often, once or twice a year, you should be fine with regular maintenance. So all we see here is a bit of dust, right? Accumulation, you have these leaves, dirt and debris. Uh, before I show you what we have for detailing tools, products and equipment, what we need to do is first start by blowing off with either compressed air or a leaf blower, or uh, maybe if you have um, a vacuum, you're going to vacuum up all this dirt and debris that might be around the vehicle, so all the loose stuff. So for me, I'm gonna grab my car dryer, which is a blower basically. So now that we removed or knocked off any loose dirt and debris, I'm gonna show you the simple uh, chemicals, the equipment, the tools, and the products that we're gonna be using today. So first of all, we're gonna need a degreaser. So what I like is Koshemi GS. This is a pH 12 and a half, so an alkaline cleaner, basically an all-purpose cleaner. And they're Green Star for use in the engine bay. They recommend to dilute one to five or one to 10. So one part of product for five parts uh, of water or one part of product to 10 parts of water in a spray bottle. So what I did here, I have this Carpo Dilute spray bottle. I diluted uh, Koshemi Green Star five to one. So five parts of water to one part of product in a spray bottle. Uh, I'm gonna have also this Koshemi 
This is their active foam. This has a pH of nine and a half. You're gonna see why I'm gonna use this. We're gonna first start by spraying the degreaser. We're gonna let that dwell and to prolong the dwell time and to get further into the nooks and crannies and all the crevices and the hidden parts, we're gonna use this active foam, diluted one part of product to 10 parts of water in this foam cannon. And then a few brushes that we're going to need. So some flag tip brushes here. We also have these work stuff brushes. Uh, so different sizes, different tips, uh, different configurations. This longer one here that we're going to use for the hood as well. And any intricate areas where you need where you need to dig deeper inside, you can use these kind of easy detail brushes as well. Uh, if you don't have a foam cannon, by the way, you can use a foaming pump sprayer like this uh, Axle Series foamer from Marilux. This is a very good one. I have a review of the Marilux pump sprayers on my channel if you want to check those out. Uh, and at the end, we're going to rejuvenate and protect all the uh, plastic bits and pieces, the vinyl, the rubber that's underneath the hood uh, with a selection. Here I have four different products. So the first one, Motorplast. This is an engine conserver. So you can put this on a wet surface or a dry surface once you cleaned it. Uh, same thing goes for Meguiar's hyper dressing. Uh, I diluted this uh, four to one for a natural finish, but you can have high gloss, medium gloss, satin, or natural water-based product. So it won't crack or fade any of the rubber components or plastics under the engine bay. Uh, there is one in aerosol form, chemical guys, black on black. So you spray and you shine. And same thing for the stoner trim shine to restore all that color and shine like an OEM appearance uh, and a few microfiber towels. That's pretty much it. It's super simple. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take the pressure washer. We're going to start with the hood. So always work from top to bottom, right? You don't want to have your clean parts and then finish with the hood and have all that dirt and junk dripping back onto your clean surface. And we're going to rinse with the pressure washer. So here I'm using my Krenzla 1122 TST pressure washer. And I set it to roughly a thousand PSI for washing cards, which is more than enough. Just make sure you keep your wand moving. Don't focus the jet too hard. Definitely don't use any high powered gas pressure uh, washers that uh, throw out 3000 or 4000 PSI in the engine bay, you don't want to do that. So we're going to work from top to bottom. First, knock off uh, a bit of that loose dirt and debris as well with the water. And by the way, under the uh, hood, you can have some things like this. These are shields sometimes uh, for heat rejection. Other times they're used for noise insulation. So I wouldn't touch this. If it's dirty, just put a bit of APC on a microfiber towel and you can gently wipe that off. But other than that, uh, try and leave these parts alone because you don't want to crack them or have too much liquid and then have them sag and potentially be removed. So we'll just clean them manually, if anything. So we're going to work around that now with the pressure washer and just knock off any loose dirt and debris as well. And that's pretty much it guys. As you saw, you keep the wand moving and no worries for the electronic bits and pieces other than the stuff. If you really, really are scared for a bit of the more sensitive stuff like the alternator, you can cover that with a plastic baggie. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Also notice that we start with the engine bay when we fully detail a vehicle because we're going to have a lot of things splattering all over the place. So when we're done with the engine bay, that's when you're going to wash the rest of your vehicle, right? So let's take our all-purpose cleaner that we diluted in our spray bottle. We're generously gonna spray this. So what this is going to do, it's going to start lifting and dissolving all that dirt and grime. So be generous with this. And at these dilutions, these are products that are super safe to use. So like I said, we start with the top portion, but while you're at it, Soak the rest of the engine bay as well. So here we go. So again, this is gonna to start to break down all that dirt, debris, the grime, the gunk, the grease as well. Uh, if you prefer using a degreaser, if you have like a dirtier engine, you can go ahead and use that. So having a dedicated degreaser is also appropriate for here, but usually an all-purpose cleaner, as the name states, it cleans all types of surfaces. So we're going to let that dwell while we tackle the underneath portion of the hood here. We have a bunch of different brushes. I like to use this long uh, brush here, long handle brush, which is good for the fender wells as well. So in this bucket here, I have a bit of McKee's 37 rinseless wash. 
There we go, just to have a bit of lubrication on the brush. And we go ahead and we scrub. So if I wasn't talking and was to do this engine bay detail in one go, with the experience, when you get used to it, in 15 minutes tops, I'm done. So it's not something that is gonna take you hours and hours. And of course, practice makes perfect. So the more you're going to do this, the more you're gonna enjoy it. And you're also gonna see that it's quite safe when you're using the precautions. Again, some common sense. There is no real fear to be had. No worries, guys. We're gonna rinse that out. I'm gonna take the foam cannon. And again, inside here, I have a one to 10 dilution of the Koshemi active foam. So this is a pH of nine and a half. So it's not pH neutral. It has a bit uh, more cleaning power. So it's kind of this, they mixed uh, their pH neutral GSF or gentle snow foam with a bit of that green star integrated. So an all purpose cleaner, put that in and made this foam. So what this is going to allow is that degreaser that we sprayed on there or the all purpose cleaner. We're gonna have a longer dwell time with the foam and also reach all the deeper nooks and crannies, the intricate areas, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead. And there we go. Okay, so notice how everything is beautifully covered. So now we have a longer dwell time. It's dissolving and encapsulating all that dirt, debris, grime, grease, all that stuff. So to help that now, we're gonna do some mechanical agitation. We have a selection of brushes here that we're going to use. And this is the fun part. Now, if you've never detailed an engine bay before, you're gonna see just how much satisfaction you get from doing this, guys you can see all that dirt just melting away, just dissolving, and knowing that every single part of the vehicle, right, not just the interior and the exterior, but also the engine bay compartment is clean. There's something so satisfying about that. So use a few different brushes. So I have different sizes and different types to reach all sorts of parts. Now we're not aiming for a museum type or concourse level restoration here. All we want is to have a clean engine bay. Your mechanic is gonna thank you by the way, cause he'll have clean surfaces to work with. There you go. Again, work on a clean and cool surface. I should say not clean, but cool. That way you're not gonna run into any issues by working on a hot engine bay. So always wait for the thing to cool up. All right, so this was one of the bigger brushes. Now you can take one of the more intricate ones to get into the little areas, right? And to make sure we reach everything. Hopefully everything is fine with the resolution. Of course, the GoPro doesn't have the same capabilities as my bigger Sony A7S Mark III, but hopefully you can see everything well. Hopefully you can hear the audio quite crisply. So you just go about it. You're gonna feel like an artist <laughs> by doing this because you're working on everything with different brushes, right? To reach all the nooks, all the crannies. So always have a different assortment of different types of brushes and they're always going to be valuable regardless of what detailing needs you have, because you can use some for the interior, for the exterior. And you're seeing this in real time, by the way. So you can tell, you don't have to be super, super gentle. Again, I know there's a lot of videos out there. A lot of people like to stress people by saying, ah, oh, it's so complicated to do an engine bay. Don't do it. You're gonna break everything. Well, again, I detailed hundreds and hundreds of engine bays through the years, never had a single issue. Why? Because I use common sense and the tips and tricks that you're hearing in this video. Of course, use some precaution on older vehicles, right? Anything that's older than 10 or 15 years might not be as watertight as modern cars today, because the majority of the car makers 
they really go through extensive testing and extensive lengths to make sure that their engine bays are watertight. Now you can grab these wheel brushes that have these fibers that can go uh, deeper inside areas like here behind the radiator that you don't necessarily have access to with other brushes. So this is what I like from having a different selection. It allows you to get deeper into the nooks and crannies, like here, for example, and you get in between stuff and you just have a blast. Always, guys, if you watch my videos, for those of you who've been watching for a longer time, perhaps, you know that one of my goals is to inspire my viewers to go out there and enjoy detailing their cars. And this should be a fun experience for everyone. And by making things funner like this, well, guess what? You're gonna be more inclined to take care of your vehicle more often. So there we go. By the way, for you professional detailers out there, when you're doing an engine bay, make sure to have your customer sign a contract that you're not liable for any damage because you don't know what condition the engine bay is in, right? If there's any cracked air boxes or cracked hoses or leaking stuff, that is up to the customer to know the uh, service, uh, the reliability, what's the state of the uh, components and the state of their vehicle. All right, so let's go ahead and rinse all of this down. And we're happy with that. And by the way, guys, uh, when you're using a pressure washer, believe it or not, you're using less water than your traditional garden hose. So you're more efficient at what you're doing. Now you could leave the engine bay wet, just like it is and spray on uh, one of these two dressings because they can go on wet surfaces. So for example, Motorplast, you would spray it all over. You'd close the uh, engine cover or the hood cover and just let it go for a few hours until it dries off itself levels and you're going to have that awesome finish. The same applies for the Meguiar's hyper dressing. So while it's still wet, you're going to spray uh, and be very generous with it. Spray all the components, close the hood, let it go for a few hours until it fully dries. Uh, and then again, you're gonna have a nice uh, surface. Everything's gonna be protected and uh, have that nice OEM appearance. You can use a microfiber towel uh, to blot any excess. But what I like to do for a safety precaution is we're gonna blow dry the engine bay compartment. So you can have a full blown car dryer like I do or you can use uh, something like this, depending on your budget. This is a smaller Metrovac Air Force Blaster Sidekick. So it shoots uh, filtered hot dry air. So that way you can dry the uh, engine bay and not have any issues. But I'm gonna use the uh, big boy here. This uh, big boy Blower R Pro. Always use protective uh, gear for your ears. So already guys, we can tell just how beautiful this looks. It's like 95% dry. Whatever is left, uh, we're gonna leave there because we're going to be applying the dressing. Uh, and by the way, if you don't have a car dryer or a leaf blower, you can use compressed air if you have an air compressor or you can towel dry it with microfiber towels. Always use, of course, your secondary towels, not the cleanest ones. Use ones that perhaps are used or ready to go in the garbage. Keep those for <laughs> engine bay detailing so you can mop up the excess water or if you're outside leave it dry in the sunlight and let the uh, water naturally evaporate so what i like to do we have a selection once again of four types of dressings i really really like the water-based ones because they're not going to promote any cracking or fading of the uh, rubber or plastics because they don't contain any solvents in them but they all work super well so for example if you take uh, this one here koshemi motorplast so if you read in the back they say that it's a water displacement 
Racing Engine Conserver. Treated parts regain their new appearance, which is what we want. The power units are protected from corrosion and environmental factors by permanently elastic protective film. And it's temperature resistant to 250 degrees Celsius. So perfect for use in engine bays, obviously. So shake your chemicals and you're going to spray this. So you can spray on a wet or dry surface. If you spray it on wet, it's gonna self level, but you need a few hours for it to fully dry. So at this point, you can close the hood and just let it uh, continue drying on its own. What we're going to do is spray this liberally. As you can see, we're going to let it dry. I'm gonna close the hood, clean the rest of the vehicle off, come back later and just mop up with a microfiber towel so that way we don't have uh, any unwanted high spots or any streaking, but we're gonna have this brand new appearance. We're gonna protect everything. Uh, a lot of these, by the way, also have UV protection in them, so you can always read the instructions and the label, but they're going to help prevent fading and cracking, but more importantly, they're gonna give that super nice detailed appearance to your engine bay. And at this point, you can also remove any plastic baggies that you had to uh, cover the uh, alternator, uh, perhaps if you wanted to cover your coil packs on top of the engine bay, if you disconnected your battery, you could go ahead and reconnect that once everything is fully dry. And any other sensitive components that you guys might want to cover, use plastic baggies, cover those if it makes you feel better as well. But again, on newer vehicles, 10 to 15 years, as you saw, it's pretty simple. Everything is pretty much watertight and well sealed. Just use common sense. Keep moving with your water. Don't stay focused on the same area for minutes on end. That's when you run into issues and don't use too high pressure. So nothing over 2000 PSI, anything between a thousand to 2000 PSI to wash cars is what we're aiming for, or just your regular garden hose if you want. And if you really wanted to, you can use the uh, touchless watch appearance by using something like a waterless wash that you would spray without any water, then use a few brushes, mop up with a microfiber towel. Obviously you won't achieve this same level of cleanliness and you'll be working a lot harder. This is the simple and easy way and efficient way uh, to do it. And you're gonna come back at the end. We're gonna watch the end results together and see how awesome this looks. So now I'm gonna wash the rest of the vehicle and get back to this. Who guys, just look at this end result. How awesome is that? So we restored it to this better than new appearance because it's not only clean now, but we also dressed it. Everything is more accessible. You're not going to dirty yourself when you're uh, having to do some stuff in the engine bay. Of course, your uh, car mechanic will thank you. So the hood, everything is nice and tidy. It's now dry to the touch. We used a simple towel to buff off any uh, residual uh, dressing that was there. But uh, yeah, man, what do you guys think? Drop a comment in the comment section under the video. If there are some things as well that you do differently, let me know, drop a comment. And now uh, let's go ahead and see those final shots. So guys, let's see this radical transformation. So the before shots where you can see that the engine bay was quite dirty. It wasn't the dirtiest engine bay ever, but it still had some dirt, some grime, some dust, and it didn't quite look as good as it was when we first bought the vehicle brand new. And in the after shots, hopefully you can see the striking difference. Everything is clean. Everything has been enhanced and protected as well. It looks absolutely amazing and it looks brand new now. And you can do this as well in the comfort of your own home uh, either once or twice a year is what I'd recommend of course once again make sure to follow all the precautions uh, that were uh, given to you and the tips and tricks in this video use some common sense and you'll be fine uh, and also I remind you all the tools equipment and products that I used in this video I'll link those in the description under the video for you guys to check them out uh, if you enjoy this kind of a video well know that I have over 800 videos on my channel this is one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube thanks to you guys my viewers and subscribers so thanks for being there thanks for watching and in the meantime don't forget keep it tight keep it clean and I'll see you on the next one